It's Clinton County High School basketball time on WILO, WILO2, and streaming worldwide at ClintonCountyDailyNews.com. Clinton County basketball action brought to you by Bruno's Pizzeria, Encompass Credit Union, Serve Pro of Boone and Clinton Counties, The Farmer's Bank, Newell's Gas and Appliance, Indiana Packers, Wampler Services Incorporated, Frankfurt Adult Learning Center, Longhorn Marketing Inside MCF, and Casper Media. Your voice for Clinton County High School basketball is on the air. And tonight is the Battle of the Dogs as the Clinton Central Bulldogs have made the trek into Everett Case Arena to play on John Milhound's court against the French for Hot Dogs. I'm Don Stock. Carl Kirchner here to my left. Dan back in studio. Russell Casper here on my right side. We're on TV again tonight. Carl, I'm uh. I always had a face for radio, Don. <laughs> well, they're going to like you on TV, too. I, I promise you. You'll, you'll be just fine there. All right. Well, this took the last week or last night. They didn't play very well. They're still going to be without Axel Brandenburg, which is going to devastate the boards as they did last night. Um, don't know if there's a, a clue for that. Well, last night was their, their first crack at having to go at it without Axel, and if you don't know, Axel Brandenburg is kind of the heart and soul a little bit. Uh, second leading scorer, leading rebounder, second leading assist man, kind of a defensive organizer kind of guy. To not have him on the floor is going to be a problem for the Bulldogs if that goes any extended period of time at all. And now put on top of that that you're coming in here to Everett State Arena taking on the Frank and Hot Dogs. It's going to be a tall order for Clinton Central tonight, but as coach Fonzo White pointed out last night, it just means that everybody's got to step up their game a little bit more, and he's really kind of starting to lean on guys like Tommy Davidson and Tristan Knox to do a little more, and especially on the board. Boy, we saw Rossville really put it to Clinton Central last night in the rebounding category. you got to figure that was a point of emphasis at the walkthrough here this morning. So what are one of the things that we've got going on here is that when a county school comes in, I don't care what county school it is, comes into the arena, adrenaline is going to be a lot more for the first two or three minutes. We watched that in the JV game as the uh, little JV kids come out just uh, playing their hearts out, but then that kind of settles down. Um, uh, is that going to be that should be the same case here for the varsity side? Well, absolutely. You're going to come in here ready to go. And the one th the one category that uh, it doesn't matter talent level or any injuries or anything else is if you play hard or not. Effort is always something you can bring night in and night out. And, and uh, Coach White and his staff emphasized the 50-50 ball. That's the loose ball that is up for grabs for anybody, and they expect their guys to be the ones to get it. Their guys should be the ones diving on the floor. And even if they have to go through you to get to it, they expect them to do that. So Clinton Central's got to play with extra effort this evening. And uh, as long as they do that, we saw we saw the JV team uh, for all four quarters. Even though they were down 20, 25 points, they continued to play hard, dive on the floor. That's one thing that's going to get ingrained in these kids and has been from day one. The coaching staff expects effort and nothing less. Well, we got to watch Keenan Orr stay on the floor for the whole night last night. But I thought he played a little passive. Um, you've got to get a happy medium, do you say? Absolutely, and I think last night he was trying to settle into a different role also. If you remember last night was the first time they introduced kind of the all-Smith backcourt with Brendan and Smith and Spencer handling things, trying to let them get in the groove a little bit from the point guard position, try to be the ones to set things up. And I think that made Keenan, as you point out, a little too passive. Uh, he's going to have to be a little more of the, of the uh, aggressor here this evening. He's going to have to want the ball in his hands a little more often than not. When, when Keenan's got the ball in his hands, good things can happen for Central. He's going to draw a lot of attention. He can get other people involved in that way. And, of course, he can just rise above uh, everybody else and the rim and, and play up top. So let's look for Keenan to be a little more involved, especially early. I think what Central will have a concerted effort to try to get him as many touches as they possibly can right from the outset so that he can get into the flow of the game, find the rhythm here early on. Joe no Douglas, number 12, he'll still be out. He hasn't got enough practice in, but he should be playing soon. And then I saw Austin Messinger out. 
He's doing, he's doing layups and warm-ups with the rest of the team, so he's got to be getting close. I, I would say maybe we see him a little bit at the tournament next week, but certainly when the calendar puts to February, I think that was the plan and the goal all along once that uh, hand injury came to light, that, that they would have Austin certainly by February. So if the Bulldogs can just uh, do what they can here, they're having to learn how to play without Axel right now, and they've played all, all year long practically without Austin Bessinger. And then uh, hopefully they can get everybody back and healthy and ready to go here at the end of the season. All right, we're going to turn our thoughts now towards the hot dogs a little bit. They're coming off a, a loss. I talked to Coach Catherine about their loss at, at uh, Central Catholic last night. They, you know, we were getting sex by an old buddy who was talking about being hammered, but he thought the officiating was very, very good. He thought that what happened was we pushed the panic button. Central went on a – Catholic went on a quick four-point run, and the guys got into a panic – they started chucking up threes. Now, we, we've seen them play where they don't hit threes very well. We've seen them play where it's lights out, kind of like uh, a little bit of a roster, I guess you want to say. So tonight, you know, I, I'm thinking that for Frankfurt, they're going to have to extend the defense to make things wide open inside. Well, Frankfurt's game plan tonight is pretty simple. Uh, they, they know that they can force some Bulldog turnovers to look for them to put some pressure um, the entire length of the floor. Also, they know that they can out-rebound the Bulldogs if they just crash the boards, much like Ross Hill did last night, to look for everybody to go after rebounds. To the three-point thing that you're talking about, Frankfurt only shoots 30% out there. That, that's not good enough to become a team that relies on it. And if that's what happened at the end of that Central Catholic game, then it's, it's no wonder that they wound up getting beat by a dozen points or whatever it was. Frankfurt's got to attack the basket. It should be something that they can do with relative ease tonight as they have the, the size advantage. Look for them to go to Carter Taylor down low. They can utilize them. And I'm forgetting names off the top. Griffin Harris, when he comes in off the bench. But Jared Smith is always going to attack the basket. Malik King is always going to attack the basket. And Jordan Campbell is also going to do that. Sabalo seems to kind of be the guy that gets lost in the shuffle. Somebody comes off of him. The next thing you know, he's made six baskets. He's got a dozen points, too. It, it, it's all going to work for Frankfurt as long as they stay in attack mode and they don't settle for the outside shot. On the on the other side of that, I would think Clint Central would do well tonight to sit back in his own and see if Frankfurt can make one out there. Well, I always think of Carter Taylor as being our Keenan Orr. He, when he attacks the basket, he, he plays a little out of control, goes in, shoulder, head down, and uh, that's, that's got to roll it out because just like Keenan Orr, he's got to stay on the floor too. Yeah, we... we we're at the game here just last week when, when both Carter Taylor and Jordan Campbell spent a lot of the first half in foul trouble, and you saw how much Frankfurt was, was, was struggling just to just to have any kind of flow on the offensive end. That's never a problem when Carter Taylor's on the floor. They can they can go through him on any possession. And as, as long as you've got a 6'7 guy down there that is that athletic, now there are some 6'7 guys that can't get out of their own way. Carter Taylor's not that guy. He is just athletic as they come. And uh, if Frankfurt can utilize him, again, that means he has to stay on the floor. They're going to beat a lot of people. Uh, we've, we've seen too many times also where he becomes, oh, he just settles for the outside jumper when he doesn't have to. I don't know what we're getting ready for here, but everybody's standing up. I just feel like I feel like everybody's looking at us now. I think we're okay. The fact of the matter is, if Carter Taylor can stay on the floor, Frankfurt's going to win a lot of games. I'm getting well, kicked in the back already. I, I know that. I know that in the Rossville game last last Saturday we, we had here, last second shot made by Malik King, that uh, Rossville felt like. Jared Smith was going to get the ball at the end, but it turned out that they gave it to his feet for the king for the easy layup. And so now you've got that double mix out there for the hot dogs, and uh, that's, a, that's a good thing for them too. I think I think everyone in the in the arena thought that that Jared Smith would get the ball and, and be able to come down and, and get the last shot. You saw Rossville immediately double team him as he came off the screen. So it was pretty simple. They inbounded it to Malik King, and he went down and shot a four-foot jumper in the middle of the lane. It, it, was, it was the craziest thing I've seen because he never had to change direction. He never had to slow down. It was really pretty easy. And when you find out that, yeah, everybody was kind of thinking it, it was going to be Jared Smith, so they all went with him. Malik King is going to bring a new dimension to this Frankfurt team, both offensively and defensively, and in the transition game in between. He's got a lot of speed. He's got enough size at the point guard position that, that uh, he can play that even more effectively. 
he doesn't lack for confidence, which you can you, you can bank on that. You, when your point guard has some confidence in his game, that's going to carry him a long way. And, uh, oh, by the way, he's just a sophomore. Yeah, <laughs> good thing. All right, the Hot Dogs, 4-9 coming in tonight. Central 3-10. and 10. It's the Battle of the Dogs, and we'll have it for you here. After a two-minute timeout, we'll have the starting lineups. You're listening to the voice of Clinton County Basketball on 1570. 96.9, streaming on Clinton County Daily News, and pick us up on WILO TV. We all know Bruno's Pizzeria has the best pizza in town, made with fresh ingredients every day. But did you know they offer gluten-free pizzas too? Gluten-free pizza is now available upon request at Bruno's Pizzeria. Don't feel that you have to fix your gluten-free pizza at home. Take a break, pick up the phone, and dial 659-2121. That's 659-2121, and ask for gluten-free pizza. Bruno's Pizzeria, 1447 East Wabash Street, Frankfurt. Any financial institution can offer a home equity loan, but no one else has the personal service, the range of options, and the competitive rates we have. You can use the equity in your home for remodeling or any good reason. And you'll be supporting our local community. Talk to us about a home equity loan, an equal housing lender. Encompass Credit Union. Member NCUA. Community-minded. Just like you. Just like you. Hi, this is Missy from ServePro. Did you know that 50% of businesses may never reopen following a fire or water disaster? That's why it's crucial to make sure your business is ready for whatever happens with a free emergency-ready profile from ServePro of Boone and Clinton Counties. So get ready today and protect your property from the uncertainty of tomorrow by calling ServePro of Boone and Clinton Counties at 765-659-9600, helping make fire and water damage like it never even happened. Whether your gas needs are grain drying or home heating, there's no gas like propane. Propane goes to work and keeps on working at a more reasonable cost than you ever thought possible. Call Newell's Gas and Appliance in Michigan Town today for free estimates. You can rely on Newell's Gas and Appliance for dependable propane on time, regardless of the weather. Propane plus service, available at Newell's Gas and Appliance in Michigan Town. 249-2866. That's 249-2866. Uh, thank you for joining us again. We're getting ready to start off the battle between... The Bulldogs and the Hot Dogs and with our starting lineup. Indeed, if you're ready now, the starting lineup for tonight for the visiting Clinton Central Bulldogs coming in at 3 and 10 on the season. Under head coach Fonzo White starting at one guard, a sophomore number four, Brendan Smith. At the other guard, a freshman number five, Spencer Smith. Starting at one forward, a junior number 22, Keenan Orr. Starting at another forward, a senior number 24, Tommy Davidson. And you're the forward of senior number 32, Taylor Turner. For the homestanding Frankfurt Hot Dogs, 4-9 and nine on the season under head coach Jared Catherine. Starting in one guard, a 5 10 senior number 20, Jordan Campbell. At point guard, a 6-1 sophomore, number 22, Malik King. Your third guard is a 6-foot senior number 33, Jared Smith. Starting in forward, 6-3 senior number 32, Stephen Zabalas. And your other forward is 6'7", junior number 34, Carter Taylor. All right, the hot dogs being introduced right now. They're in a home white uniform, the Trimpton Royal Blue, Blue Royal Blue numbers, hot dogs across their chest. Got a little gray striping coming down their pants, and they're wearing blue shoes, blue socks, the hot dog of the Bulldogs. And they're traveling all green royal, or Kelly green jersey. White blue ones split the central across their chest. They all wear green shoes and uh, some in white socks, some in black socks. Don't make a lot of difference. Uh, they'll be going left to right on your radio dial. And we're about to kick this one off. Hey, we want to thank Ed Niehaus, athletic director here at Frankfurt High School. I'll tell you, he's very, very hospitable. And he's given us the opportunity to uh, tap ourselves on to the internet here for our TV broadcast. And we want to thank Ed for his hospitality. All right, getting ready to tip it up. Keenan Orr will be in one side. Carter Taylor will be on the other. And all the officials saying, let's get her going, and that's what we say, too. And we're about to roll. Whistle blows, ball in the air, and the owner will be Clinton Central. And they'll have first attack as uh, Spencer Smith 
has the basketball. Kicks back to Davison. Actually, it was Brandon Smith. He has the basketball. Turner now has it right side wing as they get it inside. Kick it back out to Turner. A little confusion. He could have had a shot outside. He misses the layup. Fought for between the Ballas and Spencer Smith. And it'll go to the hot dog. Long jump ball. Yeah. Again, I know Flint Central trying to use some of their sets instead of more of the read-react stuff that they've used for a good portion of the season. But again, you see how tentative that can make them on the offensive end. Central in their full court press. They get it broke. J-Rod has it heading down. Shot up in the air. And it rolls off the front of the end. A dog on the attack. Oh, Keenan Oler pulls it down. Here he comes right side on the offense. And he's going to get pushed out of bounds. Got a little uh, aggressor there with Malik King. And it'll be ball out of bounds to the Bulldogs. First foul on King. King first as well. 7.21 to go first quarter. Still no score. Clinton Central will trigger from underneath their own basket. And next week we'll be doing the uh, Hoosier Heartland Conference Basketball Tournament. It's their first one. We'll talk a lot about it. We've got our, our matchups of how we'll be going. And uh, we'll talk about that as the game progresses. Central trying to force one up. They get a foul there on the ballast. And uh, it'll be ball out of bounds. to the Bulldogs again. 7-13, no score yet. As both teams have had at least one shot. Well, Central looking to attack. You can see that here early. Attack on the drive and see if they can create a little contact. Ball's inbound. Caught for between Smith and Orr. Goes into the backcourt and Brendan Smith picks it up. And he'll set the offense up between the circles. Looking to come left. Now crosses over right. Give it to Davis at the top to key. Davison goes inside, kicks back out to Smith. Smith now heading down. Nope, back to Turner. Has a little weave on the outside. Spencer Smith shot up. No good. Rebound fought for. And a foul by Spencer. That'll be two on him. Oh, sorry. He just feels loud in here. He does. So the dogs getting ready to inbound. They have done so. So Ballas gets the center court, gives it back to Campbell. And uh, he sets the offense up. J Rod tries to go baseline. A little shove there. And it's going to be on Spencer Smith again. Now that's his thing. That's his second. I got the Smiths picked up. Well, he's got two. I think both teams now have two. It's Tristan Knox who's going to check in for. The freshman, Spencer Smith. Malik looking to get inbound. Finally does better. Nobody gets out and him. He'll shoot that three and bury it. And here I criticize him for settling for that shot too off. That's why I'm sitting here with you. Knox has it. Gives it down to Smith. Smith squares up a three ball. He buries it. Up two. Just inside the arc. Three, two. Dogs lead. Having problems with the getting the ball across. Malik is. And he had this last week with not being able to dribble and go at the same time. Well, Malik and Keenan Orr share a bit of a lighter moment right there. But it's 3-2, to two, Frankfurt 6-11 to go first quarter. Malik getting ready to cross the 10-second line. Does pass it before Trap comes on. Gives it to Taylor. Big shot. Heads inside. Kiss on the glass. No good. Gets his own rebound. Puts back. And he misses it again. And this time, Moore pulls it down. Now the pass is up trying to to Davison. Malik kicks it out of bounds. And the loudest clapping person in the world sitting to my left. Yeah, I'll tell you, we uh, pick up a lot of noise by anybody who's close to us, that's for sure. Brendan Smith gets the inbound pass. 547, 3-2. Both teams with a basket apiece. One three one two. Turner to the rack, puts one up, count the basket, wow. put him to the line. Nice take by Taylor Turner, and again, it's pretty clear that Clint Central wants to go on the attack into the lane. In this particular case, he draws the first foul on Carter Taylor, and Taylor Turner to the line to complete the three-point play. Shot all the way, misses, rebound Jared. Smith, and he brings it in front court, gets it down here to Malik King, scores up a three ball, back to the rim. Campbell rebound, put back and in. Jordan Campbell's ball game right there. We, uh, talked, we talked last night about Harrison Whiteman of Rossville. 
and uh, Jordan Campbell is Frankfurt's version of that, and a timeout here in the backcourt by Clemson. I uh, have a hard time getting the ball across the 10 second line. Turn your junk at a time. Walk for services, a ties for junk cars, tin, metal, copper, brass, washers, dryers, stoves, and refrigerators. Call Walk for services at 659 3721 and turn your junk into cash. You know, I, I kind of feel a little sorry for Coach White because he always seems to have to play the game with somebody early in his Sunday lineup in foul trouble. Always. And uh, he's got to go to the bench quickly, and he doesn't, he's not capable of getting his kids into the game as far as all five of them. And yet, by the same token, you don't want to tell your kids not to play aggressively. So you just, you just learn and, and hopefully create a little depth that way. Turner jumps off the baseline, no good. Rebound Spencer or uh, Brandon Smith, and his put back is good giving Central their first lead of the night, six spots. We're already seeing Clinton Central do a better job of rebounding in this one than they did at any point in the game last night. Xavier Frazier has reported into the game, and the ball goes off of Sabalas out of bounds, and it'll be their first turnover of the night. Well, it's a pretty good start here for Clinton Central. You had a concern for the guys from the east part of the county to come in here and maybe get buried early, but they're hanging, they're hanging tough. Turner wide open three misses. Campbell rebound. Turner now fouls him on a crazy foul. And uh, Coach White just gets furious about that. Here's, a, here's what is called a teachable moment. Coach White saying, I don't need that shot right now. Look at the scoreboard, understand time and possession, and understand, remember what the game plan was. Attack the rim. Don't settle for the three. Derek brings it in front court, swings it down the baseline for Ballas, gets it into Taylor for an easy two. It's a nice dive to the back by Carter Taylor. He's got five here early on. Frankfurt leads by one. Field has a travel by George or by Mr. Landis. And uh, didn't quite get a stop. You know, one of the things I w- want to talk a little quickly about was the fact that they have 11 turnovers they beat Frankfurt and only eight assists per game. But, you know, when, when we watched it against Rossville, they were very unselfish. I mean, they, I would think that their assist ratio should be higher than what it is. It's a team that, that too often, though, winds up settling for kind of a one-on-one kind of game when, or drive to the basket kind of game. And when you do that, you don't get assists on the made basket. Here's a missed opportunity. Yeah, Jared misses the three ball shot. And uh, Sabalos heads out of bounds trying to get it. He doesn't come up with it. And it'll be Central's basketball. Campbell coming out, and Harris has come in. We get hot dogs out of Harris, Frazier, Malik King, Taylor, and Smith. And coming down the back court, they get a back door down to Orr. His shot missed, kind of deflected, I think, from Harris. And uh, the dogs will pull the rebound down. Smitty has it. Smith heads inside the paint. Jumper shot no good, way off the mark. As J-Rod is as cold as he was hot against Roscoe's home. Davidson has it. Hands it off to Turner. Turner comes baseline. It's going to be a charge as Taylor got position. And Turner picks up foul number two. All right. So Taylor Turner with two. Spencer Smith with two. That is to your point. This team always seems to start every game in foul trouble. Actually, they're going to bring Spencer back into the game. Or Taylor Turner. This is where you uh, really hate the fact that Axel is out for the game. He limits the bench. So Harris, well, Malik has it. Doesn't get trapped. Gets it for Frazier. Frazier now gives it across the 10 second line. Smitty splits the D and gets it poked away by Orr. It'll be a hot dog ball out of bounds. 3.32 to go in the first period. 7-6, hot dog, slow start. And yet there's been a lot of action. You know, it hadn't been a lot of scoring, just been a lot of action. So hang in there. I think I think the fun starts soon. Well, Harris gets an inbound, can't get control of it. The ball's on the deck, and it's going to head to the hot dog. As uh, the official says, oh, well, we're going to give it to the hot dog. Green touch the last. How about Andy Foster down here, a former Frankfurt <laughs> hot dog, sporting the green and white tie on the Bulldog bench? He, he was pointing Bulldog way. Yeah, I, I was 
saying that the most confused guy in the house is going to be his dad sitting up here to our left as he didn't know who to root for. As the ball goes off of Jared out of bounds, second turnover for the dog. Well, Flint Central's being really pesky, for lack of a better term, down here on the defensive end. And again, they're just simply doing a much better job on the boards here in the first quarter tonight. Keenan comes right side, kicks out Spencer, three ball, misses, rebound. Malik King's way up in the air. Taylor has it, gets a knock out of his hand, turnover by the dogs, and quickly down is Davison. Real good hands by Keenan there to strip that one away from Carter Taylor before he could go up with Keenan won the basketball and knocks him not out here. We're going to work it out here a little bit. And he's between the circles. 248 to the first. Go. Four now has it. Looking for Davidson coming across. Shot no good. Harris with the rebound. They've done a nice job on Tommy Davidson. That was his first shot attempt, and it was a little bit forced and out of the flow. They know that if they can limit Tommy Davidson, it's going to be all rest on Keenan Orr. Taylor gets the guy in the air. Now they get the Orr in the air. They're going to give him a two-shot foul. That's a nice job by Taylor. Boy, was Orr in the air or what? Yeah, that, was, that was a very dangerous situation that resulted in, in uh, no harm except for a foul call. When you're that high in the air, a lot of bad stuff can happen. First foul on Keenan, team six, Carter Taylor for two. First free throw missed by Taylor. I mean, I say that, I've never been that high in the air. <laughs> Me neither. It's just amazing. I, I, I enjoy watching him play. He, he, he plays hard, and he does a lot of good things. He's got another year on him, so that'll help him out a bunch. Quickly down, Davidson forces a little action. Shot no good. Rebound, Taylor pulls it down as... Spencer Smith and him will fight for it. Central's Spencer missed some Smith. open shots. And if Central's going to win this game and stay competitive in this game, they're going to have to make open shots like that one. Campbell goes on the attack. He gets fouled by Brendan Smith, but I think he got the worst of it. Because now, now guess what? With two minutes to go in the first quarter, Frankfurt shooting free throws the rest of the half. That's the first foul on Brendan Smith, team seventh, and Jordan Campbell to the line for a one-on-one. You know, I almost said it wasn't looking pretty. We had three fouls of feet, and we were only two minutes in. Frankfurt shoots him at 71% on the season. Bama looks short, rolls it in, got the shooter's roll there. Stretches the lead to two. It's been a while since somebody scored. I'm just glad somebody did. Second one on the way. That's good also. 9-6. It ties the biggest lead of the night for the dog. Orr gets the ball back from the end down. Here he comes right side. Splits the defender, loses possession of the ball. A central guy throws it back in, and they're going to call over and back. Yep, nobody from Frankfurt ever touched it. That's going to be an over and back call and give it to Frankfurt here right at midcourt in front of them. Central has settled into this 2-3 zone, but they haven't done a real good job yet of keeping Frankfurt out of the lane, either by pass or dribble. I would suck it in there a little bit tighter and make them shoot from deep. And if they've hit only one three-pointer all throughout this entire first quarter. Campbell head fakes, pushes off, no foul, gives it to Smith in the corner. Jarrett behind the back dribble, doesn't get the shot off, and off by the team. King looking around, gives it back to Campbell, can't get it inside to Moore, who's reported in. And we're going to get a travel on Malik King. Now that's a much better job that time by Central. Shutting down the lane. Now, Carter Taylor not being in the game may have something something to do with that. But they force the, the error out front. Central still within one possession here, 120 to go in the first quarter. Brendan Smith brings it in the front court. Malik King comes out after him, and he crosses over. He hits the line. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't. He was close, but I don't know if he was on. He was close. But hey, at Everett Case Arena, he was on the line. <laughs> were you waiting for it? Yeah, I, you were going to say there. I was going to at least get it rolling. I'm trying to be better. Jared missed that putback by Damon Moore. Eleven six. Trap comes on. They got Orr in a corner. Gives it a knock. Knock brings it in. We're under a minute. Finds Davison. Shot wow. gets blocked by Moore. 
get the return shot, knocked out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Bulldogs. As the pauses go to Damon Moore on the defense. Now, my guy to my left here, he's taking a foul to the win call. I can tell by his quiet. I'll just, wow. Keenan Orr gets drilled. He'll be shooting three by Damon Moore on the three ball. Crazy foul there. So Keenan's the one Bulldog been doing a little better from the free throw line. As of late, the team just does not shoot free throws very well. Keenan's worked pretty hard at it. He got his percentage up to 63% on the team. Ah, yeah, Keenan rolls that one in. You know, one thing that I noticed the difference between when he first started shooting and when he shoots now is he spreads out on the line a little more. Well, get a good base. Good base. Get you a good uh, balance that way. He's got good rotation on it all the way through. Yeah, he's, and he's shooting a lot more confident. And as we heard the coach done from Rossville last night, it's all about that rhythm thing. Rhythm. Rhythm confidence goes a long way at the free throw line. If you think you're going to miss, you probably will. That one goes in and out. Harris with the rebound, 11-8. Campbell quickly down. Jumper inside the arc. This is more rebound. Putback misses. And then Davison fighting for the ball. And we're going to get a foul, I think. It we're is. We're going to get physical is what we're going to get. In, in there a song like that? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get physical is about to become the, yeah. the song for tonight. Yeah. Cue that baby up for after the game. Yeah, talk to Dan about that. He, he's he good, at, he's he good at doing it. 32 seconds to go. Or with the inbound pass, there he comes right side. Puts nice. it over. Nice. Nice. for an easy crew. That is beautiful. That's seeing the floor. Good balance on the drive to the basket. A little flip behind his head for the layup to Tommy Davidson. Nice play, Keenan. So Malik King back to back out here. He's on top of the hot dog here on John Billhorn. A while well, ago, that was over and back. Uh, <laughs> he wasn't as close to the line. But here, Brandon Smith almost drifts Malik. Now he does. Couldn't pick it up. And that's what the easy two. He was a pull off the lead at the end of one. 12 11. Second quarter action just around the corner. You're listening to Clinton County High School's basketball on 1570, 96.9, and on WILO TV. Hello, Clinton County residents. I'm Kirk Saylor with Indiana Packers Corporation. We are pleased to announce we will soon start production operations at our Frankfurt facility and need good, hardworking people like you to fill production and industrial maintenance positions. If you are interested in working full-time for a leading pork processor with good pay and great benefits and live in the Frankfurt area, then stop by and see us on Friday, January 22nd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Saturday, January 23rd from 8 a.m. to noon to complete an employment application with us. Our facility is located at 1150 Vermont Street, just off of Washington Avenue near the Milky Way. We are excited about our future with the Frankfurt community and we would love to have you be part of our team. Indiana Packers is an equal opportunity employer. Come see what we're all about. We want people like you. Come be a part of our family. All right, welcome back to Edward Chase Arena, John Bell Hall Sport, John Stock Hall Social. Here for you as uh, the Bulldogs will get possession of the basketball on the start of the second period after making the last second shot there at the end of one and leading 12-11. So Brenton Smith, crossover, heads towards Mr. Orr for a screen, can't get anywhere, gives it to Davison, and he travels. Hey, it's better off catching and shooting, man. I know that's probably not the game plan. Tommy with the head and shoulder fake, shuffles the feet just enough, get the attention of, of the referee. 12-11, Bulldogs. Frankfurt on the attack, 7.45 to go to halftime. Central settles back into that 2-3 zone. All right, Campbell has the ball, heads from left to right, finds Taylor, squares up, shoots a ball in the great line, giving the dogs a 13-12 lead. I don't know, now all of a sudden I can't hear much of anything. Did we fix it? No, I didn't. I, I, didn't, I didn't change anything. And the pass is made by Landon. Uh, the Bulldogs, the that's team. impossible. Landis isn't even in the game. That was David, was it? Sorry. Right, he's not in. I was going off on a travel by the dog. 
Their fifth turnover tonight. I'm not seen. Are you okay? Can you not pick me up? I don't know. I'm not hearing much of anything. How about now? Game on. All right. Ball gets knocked out of bounds by Smitty. And uh, it'll be Bulldog basketball. Somebody needs him to turn it, pick it up. Davidson runs there. Yeah, let's reset it. Central's up 14-13, 7.07 to go to halftime. Bulldog ball. Back has it, brings it outside the arc. Turner, Taylor, is guarding the hand. Comes out to get it. Get it down to Davidson. Davidson finds it. Smith. Almost thrown by Campbell. And Campbell almost pops it off of Davidson, but it does not. And the Bulldogs will maintain possession. As they inbound it to uh, Brendan Smith. Over to Knox. Knox goes left side. Kiss off the pass. Misses. You got to finish that, though, but that was a real nice move and switch to the left hand. Campbell spins. Left side glass, no good. The ballast knocks the ball loose. Central picks it up. And then Smith steals the ball. Finds Campbell. Left side left. Missed. And the rebound comes down to Orr. And Coach White says, blow it down. Very uncharacteristic of Jordan Campbell to miss much of anything in the paint, but boy, he's missed two point blank shots in the last 30 seconds. Four looking down low, five stops, stops to the back out. 6 3 to go in the half. The Bulldogs lead 14 13. Ball gets tossed into Orr. He draws contact, shot, miss, rebound, Malik Dink. Boy, there's a lot of contact in there. Both ways. I don't mean it one way. Both ways. I guess they're going to let him play for a little bit now. Malik brings it down. Five Smith. Now Campbell. Swings it around. Sabala three ball. Way down and out. Rebound comes Campbell. And Campbell did a great job at locking Smith up. And Smith's going to get the foul. I can't imagine that Sabala's for three. Yeah. It's quite what Frankfurt wants there. Oh, look. Yeah, he, he's one for five from three-point range coming into the game. I'm, I'm thinking they wouldn't mind going ahead and working that around a little more. One for one for Campbell. Shot miss or rebound. And then Campbell gets the reach in foul. That'll bring Turner into the ball game. That's the team six. Taylor Turner returns for Brendan Smith. 5.30 to go till halftime. A very lackluster performance from Frankfurt so far. And Flint Central leads at 14-13. As they come on the attack, Keenan Orr now on the point. Xavier Frazier has reported it's the dog. Orr tries to go left side. Puts the dribble up by stop coming baseline. Shot no good. Rebound Taylor. Both teams have missed at least one handful of layups each. Only team gets by the travel feed. Taylor. Taylor gets the shot up over here. Or blocks it. Picked up by Davison. Or brings in a front court. 503 to go in the half. Or kicks back out. Central three ball. No good. And it's going to be staged by the Bulldogs, but to the hands of Smith. And it goes off of Sustala. Well, not exactly break. a clinic right now. No. As Orr squares up and slays two ball here. 16 13, their biggest lead of the night. With Frankfurt, they're either not plugged into this game or they're just tired. Or both. I, I was going to say that it looks like the Scott or Friday game has taken a lot out of them. As the balance gets it into Smith, spin moves left side to right. Off the glass and in. We finally hear from Jared Smith. His first basket of the game comes at the 418 mark of the second quarter. Central's lead is one. Keenan Orr brings the ball into the front court. Gets everybody realigned there as they uh, head the ball on the knock. Knock stop, pulls it over to Turner. And Malik King draws a little defense and goes off of Turner out of bounds. And we'll be heading to the hot dog. Nice play by Malik King there. Taylor Turner caught off guard and completely surprised. That's going to be a full time out, Chief. Hey, we're going to leave. A, we're going to head back to you, Mr. Dan. You're listening to Pittsburgh County High School Basketball here on 1570 and 96.9 on the FM dial. 
and on WILO TV. Come to the Frankfurt Adult Learning Center and get equivalency diploma, college prep, or sharpen your skills. Frankfurt Adult Learning Center can help you reach your potential classes or free. Remember, it's never too late to learn. Look up the Frankfurt Adult Learning Center on Facebook. And uh, the Bulldogs lead by one, 16-15, 3.58 to go in the first half. And uh, it's kind of been a struggle for everybody. I'll tell you what, Clinton Central has kind of brought this down into the uh, into the foxhole, if you will. They they Frankfurt kind of played down a, a level. Central just trying to turn this into a fight. So far, they're getting it done. Well, Malik Keen will bring it in the front court. Central has fallen into a two-three zone. Smitty has it, tries to split the defense. He does, and he kicks it off the glass. And this is a nice adjustment by Frankfurt. They weren't getting near enough down low. And all of a sudden, Jared Smith is the guy that's catching and making things happen in the lane. And now a turnover. Turnover by the Bulldogs. Sabalas steals the ball, gives it to Malik. Comes left side, hand off to Taylor, and he puts it in. So Central's the one that took the timeout. Frankfurt's the one that came down on fire three-point hot dog lead as we approach the three-minute mark till halftime and yet another turnover. I'll tell you, I, I don't quite understand that. As Savalas over there uh, almost draws contact, bowls up, pushes him enough to knock him out of bounds and they uh, give the turnover. What I don't understand is that you have the rest of the floor to dribble and, and you're simply trying to tiptoe along the sideline. Do a little reverse dribble and get back into the middle of the floor, then you can attack. Sample has reported back in for the hot dogs, so our starters are now back in. As Malik King saves the ball from going back forth, finds Smitty, finds Taylor, right side block, tries to get one more pass in, which he shouldn't have. Moore picks up the loose ball, here he comes, and he makes the right hand. Nice nice job by Keenan right there, recognizing the situation. He had help on the left side, but he wound up not needing it. Dallas has it, finds Taylor inside. You better do something during the three-second call. He makes the basket and put him to the line. He's going to get fouled by Keenan Orr. Keenan second. He picks it up at the 240 mark. That one was pretty cheap on his part. Carter Taylor already had the drop step on him. Go ahead and let him go make the layup. Said he gave him a little swat. Taylor finishes up the three ball. 22-18, to go. Carter Taylor's got 12 of his team's 22, and they're going to face guard Keenan Orr using Jared Smith to do so. Actually, that was a headbutt on Keenan Orr. That's <laughs> Knox has the ball. Kicks it back to Davis at the top of the key. Got a little spread. Now heads inside. Floater off the glass. So good. Rebound comes off to the hot dogs, and Malik fires quickly down the line. Smitty breaks loose. Heads to the rack, the right hand lab in the end. Start to see Jared Smith attack in the lane. Between Carter Taylor and Jared Smith, they've scored all 13 hot dog points here in the second quarter. Wide open, Knox or Turner for three, misses it. Rebound comes off to the dogs, and once again, Malik on the attack. Kicks out Turner or Taylor. Draws to the basket, shot no good. Campbell put back no good. Or picks it up, finds Knox on a breakaway. And he saves it from going out of bounds. Now gives it back to Turner. A floater no good. Rebound comes off the dogs. And Coach Catherine is saying let's slow it down. I'm, I'm tired watching. <laughs> 24-18, to go in the half. Central's trying to keep it a little slower on this end by playing this 2-3 zone, packing it tight. Smith on a spin move around Orr, and he makes the shot. Well, see, they know Keenan's got two. They're going to go right at him. And Jared Smith has the body control to be able to do that. He's got four layups here in the quarter. Knocked for the basketball, stolen by Jared Smith, and he'll make another right-hand layup. Well, Frankfurt's come out of that timeout, 
and exploded. Their lead is now 10. Central looks a little bit unpoised, let's call it. Or breakaway finds Turner. Turner finds Davis. Three ball on the way. Misses. Rebound comes off the dog. 44 seconds. We go on the half. The dogs have, as you said, been on fire coming down the stretch here. And we're going to get a reach in foul. We, it'll be a double bonus for the dogs. I believe Brendan Smith with the hand check is third. Team tenth. It'll be a two shot foul now for Malik King. Central seemed to be in a pretty decent position. I believe it was a 16 15 Bulldog lead at that time out. They've been out toward 13 to 2 since then. Who's the old fist by Malik King? Harris comes in. And uh, Taylor comes out. My goodness. As we saw last night with Orr, the best half of Taylor without getting in foul trouble. And getting him out before he has to go play defense again can help assure that. Malik just missed both free throws. Orr up high with a rebound, brings it down. Between leg dribble, kicks back out. Smith, three ball counted. It's a huge bucket for Clutch Central. They were in a bit of a lull here. Let's see what Frankfurt wants to do on this possession with 22 seconds to go till halftime. I think Coach Catherine wants the last shot. Malik has it as he throws it out of bounds. Oh, wow. They're going to say it was deflected. Nope, Keenan said, well, I thought Keenan said he said, then he shook his head like, no, I didn't touch it. Doesn't matter. Franker's got the ball. Exactly. 13-7 to go. Jared, three ball. Count it. That's a big turnaround right there. Jared's got 13 points in the quarter. All seem to come in the last two minutes. Shoot it, son. And that'll be the half as City doesn't get the ball off. And at halftime, we're 31 21. The hot dogs, please. We'll take a two minute timeout. We'll come back with our staff. You're listening to the voice of Clinton County High School basketball here on 1570, 96.9, and streaming on Clinton the Farmers Bank mobile banking and tablet app puts everyday banking tasks at your fingertips. Access is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anytime, anywhere. This is Lee Randolph, main office branch manager. And in today's fast-paced world, you need to access your money regardless of where you are. Whether you're at home, work, or on vacation, our convenient mobile banking services are just a simple click away. Our app is available on our website at thefarmersbank.com member FDIC equal housing lender. Looking for a new car or need a car to rent? Let Del Real Automotive Group take care of you. Rich the Car Rental Guy can help when it comes to mechanical breakdowns, industrial short-term leases, short-term solutions for personal transportation, insurance accident replacement, long trips with a better car, 15 passenger van use for larger groups, guests from out of town, or even transportation for pilots. Del Real Automotive Group will take care of you. DelRealAuto.com on 28 West Frankfurt. We all know Bruno's Pizzeria has the best pizza in town, made with fresh ingredients every day. But did you know they offer gluten-free pizzas too? Gluten-free pizza is now available upon request at Bruno's Pizzeria. Don't feel that you have to fix your gluten-free pizza at home. Take a break, pick up the phone, and dial 659-2121. That's 659-2121, and ask for gluten-free pizza. Bruno's Pizzeria, 1447 East Wabash Street, Frankfurt. Any financial institution can offer a home equity loan, but no one else has the personal service, the range of options, and the competitive rates we have. You can use the equity in your home for remodeling or any good reason, and you'll be supporting our local community. Talk to us about a home equity loan, an equal housing lender. Encompass Credit Union, member NCUA, community-minded, just like you. Just like you. All right, welcome back. We're at halftime here at Everett Case Arena as the... Uh, girls dance team on the floor getting ready to perform for us a score here with 618 to go in the first period Creighton leading the Butler Bulldogs 1915 and I know you've been trying to hunt down the uh, Rossville score with no luck as the uh, Rossville the only other county team in action very often until Thursday night when they were playing the Hoosier Heartland Conference Tournament 
And uh, the Hornets are playing at home against Harrison of West Lafayette. Speaking of the Hoosier Heartland Conference, we'll be in action Tuesday night as the Bulldogs will have a play-in game. They'll be playing Carroll at Clinton Central. Game time is 7 p.m. We'll be broadcasting that ball game. And then on Thursday, the winner of that ball game will take on Clinton Prairie at Clinton Prairie, 6 p.m. start there. And then we'll pick up the second ball game, the Hornets of Rossville. will take on the number three seeded team, the Tri Central Trojan, in game two on Thursday, 7.30. Depending on who wins, we'll have a ball game at 10 a.m. and 11.30 at Clinton Prairie, and hopefully it'll be the split between the Gophers and the Hornets in each of the brackets, trying to get both of those teams into the championship game of the first ever Hoosier Heartland Conference Boys Tournament. What do you got for us, Carl? That was in the first half for the visiting Bulldogs. It's kind of a scenario of uh, Let's recognize the hot hand and give him the ball. The leading score for Clint Central in the first half is Brendan Smith. He's got seven points on three shots. He made all three of them. Let's give him the ball. Keenan Orr's got six points on four shots. But again, let's get let's get Keenan and Brendan open a little bit. The rest of the team has really struggled from the field in the first half. Well, let's put it to you this way. Brendan Smith and Keenan Orr are 5 for 7 shooting. The rest of the team is 4 for 19. Tommy Davidson's got 4. Tristan Knox, 2. Taylor Turner's got 2. Plus, Simple just 1 out of 6 from 3-point land and just 2 out of 4 at the free throw line. Turned it over a whole bunch of times. And then well, Central has uh, a total of nine turnovers. The dogs have seven. Nine first half turnovers and 17 missed shots. Plus, Central's done a much better job rebounding here in the first half and really played dead even with Frankfurt until about the last two and a half minutes. And then Frankfurt went on their run. That run is led by Jared Smith. He's got 13 points. All of them came in the second quarter. Carter Taylor's got 12, Jordan Campbell 4, and Damon Moore 2. And that's the only people that scored for Frankfurt. They're 13 of 29 shooting. They're 2 out of 5 from 3-point land. And something very uncharacteristic of Frankfurt is they're 3 for 8 at the free throw line. Frankfurt could have a much bigger lead here if they could just convert from the charity strike. But they are led by... Their men, Jared Smith and Carter Taylor, those are the two guys that are going to lead Frankfurt most nights. They've got 25 of 15, 31, and it's why Frankfurt enjoys the 10 point lead here at halftime. All right, so as you were mentioning, it's kind of an even up ball game to begin with, and now then we've got a, a 10 point spread. What was successful that Central was doing that would that would kept them in this basketball game and the adjustments they're going to have to make to stay in this basketball game starting the third quarter? Central was doing a nice job in the two-three zone, keeping the ball out of the lane while they while they had that lead. The minute that they let Jared Smith start doing what he does and Carter Taylor doing what he does by, by penetrating the lane either by pass or dribble well those guys are just getting layups as soon as Stephen Orr picked up foul number two they went even harder at him knowing that he was probably going to back away and not want to pick up another foul they got a lot of layups uh, so Central's got to get back to closing down the lane especially if you're going to sit in two three zone apparently you're not sitting in it tight enough if they're able to penetrate the lane like that close it up make it shoot it from out there you've only given up two three pointers on the night let's prove that uh, let's prove Franker can make them they're only a 30% three point team so let's let's see if they can make any in the second half and, and the other thing Central's done is rebounded the ball they didn't they couldn't get a rebound last night except they're what Rossville just shoot till they made it. But Central's actually getting some rebounds here tonight. Offensively, it's, it's been a little ugly, but again, if you can get Keenan and, and Brendan Smith, those, those two are the guys that are leading in scoring. The only two guys that seem to be able to find the basket in the first half. Get them more involved offensively. See if you can, they've gotten a couple of runouts as well. Uh, maybe maybe that's something to look for as well to get a couple of cheap ones. But Central's played a pretty good first half, except for about a two minute stretch there, right toward the end of, the, of uh, the second quarter. And uh, let me tell you what, when you're down 10 at Frankfurt, that's, that's a mountain to climb. But 
It's going to be up to the first three minutes of the third quarter to see if Central can close the gap and keep it competitive. On the offensive side for Central, it seems like when they're coming on the attack of the basketball, dribble penetration, they don't seem to be fishing. They seem to settle for off-balance floaters. And uh, is, it, is it the defense that gets back, or is it just the, the offense they're trying to run? What? what? It just, it just no. doesn't, they just don't look natural down there right now. No, I, that's a mentality, and it's something that, that coaches will try to teach kids. Instead of shying away from the contact, you've got to be stronger, well, both physically but especially mentally, that you can you can create the contact and still get the shot you want. You've got to go at and through that defender instead of shying away from it. So uh, that, that's actually a, a great observation on your part. I don't mean to sound so surprised. <laughs> but that's exactly that's exactly it, my my friend. That, that yeah, Central Central's able to get to a point, and then they'll they'll jump off the wrong foot and lean away and do something that's kind of weird instead of just maybe one more power dribble and boy, take that defender right with you. And maybe you know, it could have been that somebody got called for a charge earlier. I think Taylor Turner got called for a charge earlier. That that makes the rest of the team kind of shy away from. Oh, I don't want to pick up a foul. Hey, you know what? You're in here to compete. You want to go right at that opponent. You want to go right at him and make him make a play. Uh, you know, make him take a charge. Make him feel it if he's going to take a charge, uh, so that maybe he thinks twice next time. But, but yeah, instead of shying away from from the uh, from the contact, go ahead and, and help create it. That's that's what gets you to the free throw line. That's what gets you an opportunity to score the with the clock stop. And Central's going to need some of those in the second half too. All right, so Central also has uh, another issue that they got to deal with a little bit, and that is foul trouble. So they're going to come out. They'll probably still be in that zone, which means they got to tighten that up a little bit. Uh, Franklin on the other side now. They've got to, like, find Keenor and go on the attack to him and find Turner and get on him to try to get these guys rolling to the side. So they did a nice job. As soon as Keenan hit a couple of shots, they put Jared Smith right on him. And Jared even kind of inadvertently – and headbutted him one time, kind of right there in that little gash in the chin that Keenan got last night. We saw him before the game, had that thing a little bandaged up a little bit. Said he was fine, but he might still be a little sensitive. So if you get your head under him there and kind of knock it on the chin, that'll, that might smart a little bit. But Franklin knows what they're doing in it from that standpoint. They know that Central's got three scorers. They were able to limit Tommy Davidson in the first half. Axel Brandenburg is out with that ankle injury, that leaves Keenan Orr. So they're going to D him up and make somebody else score. And let's see if Central can find who that somebody else is. Taylor Turner, Kristen Knox. In the first half, it was Brendan Smith. I would maybe run a little action for him, see if you can get him towed up there on the three-point line, and he can keep the end until the end. Just watching the Bulldogs. They've made it back out here onto the floor for the second half. And I'm watching Axel come walk, walking out here, and this is a ball game you heard. Coach Smith at least tell me last night that he was this, this game has been checked on his list for a long, long time and not to be able to play has got to really bump that guy out. He's in that walking boot. That's uh, if, if it is a high ankle sprain, it that's going to linger. He's not going to be 100 percent maybe the rest of the year, but he's at least got to be able to run on it to play. Still couldn't go today, and I think that's probably as, as disappointed the kid as as you're going to find here in the area right now. He, he wanted to come in here and play at Case Arena tonight. He knows that this, this would have been it. You know, he, he's just a junior, but then next year's game's out of Central. He, yeah. he doesn't get to play here anymore, and he, he really wanted to play here one more time. So he's a little disappointed, but you know what? He's a pretty level-headed kid, too, and he understands the process, and he's got to be healthy not just tonight, but for the rest of the season and on into next year. So... He'll take it. He'll learn from it, hopefully. Um, you learn that you get a setback now and then. It's not necessarily something you deserve, but something you got to deal with. We'll see Axel again soon. Well, in case you wanted to know, my question on who was Mike Foster, Andy Foster's dad, going to be rooting for? He take me back. Yeah, of course, it'll be behind on it. Well, Halftime Stats brought to you in part by Longhorn Barton. As WILO and WILO's two wardrobe is provided by Longhorn Market inside MCF Farm and Hardware. At their new location, Nickel Plate and 28 West, County Corner from Affordable Auto. For work, school, or play, that Longhorn creates your wardrobe. Longhorn Market in the paper. Call 765-650-4430 or log on at LHMG.biz. Hey, we're going to take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back.
fact, third quarter action should be about ready to start by that time. You're listening to the voice of Clinton County Basketball here on 1570, 96.9, and you can watch it streaming on WILO TV. Hi, this is Dave from ServPro. Lots of people love the sound of a good thunderstorm, but not if that storm is flooding your home or business. So when water rushes in, keep the damage out by calling ServPro of Boone and Clinton Counties. That's where you'll find a team of specialists with the experience and training to make sure your property is dry the first time. So when damage strikes your home or business, strike back by calling ServPro of Boone and Clinton County at 765-659-9600. Working to help make fire water damage like it never even happened. Whether your gas needs are grain drying or home heating, there's no gas like propane. Propane goes to work and keeps on working at a more reasonable cost than you ever thought possible. Call Newell's Gas and Appliance in Michigan Town today for free estimates. You can rely on Newell's Gas and Appliance for dependable propane on time, regardless of the weather. Propane plus service, available at Newell's Gas and Appliance in Michigan Town. 249-2866. That's 249-2866. Hello, Clinton County residents. I'm Kirk Saylor with Indiana Packers Corporation. We are pleased to announce we will soon start production operations at our Frankfurt facility and need good, hard-working people like you to fill production and industrial maintenance positions. If you are interested in working full-time for a leading pork processor with good pay and great benefits and live in the Frankfurt area, then stop by and see us on Friday, January 22nd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Saturday, January 23rd from 8 a.m. to noon to complete an employment application with us. Our facility is located at 1150 Vermont Street, just off of Washington Avenue near the Milky Way. We are excited about our future with the Frankfurt community and we would love to have you be part of our team. Indiana Packers is an equal opportunity employer. Come see what we're all about. We want people like you. Come be a part of our family. Indiana Packers. All right, thanks for turning back to us. As uh, I'm down south, Carl Kirkwell here to my left. As uh, we're getting ready to start third period action, the dogs leading by 10, 31-21. All starters will be in. Well, the Bulldogs will be... Brendan Smith, Spencer Smith, Keenan Orr, Tommy Davidson, and Taylor Turner. For the Hot Dogs, will be Jordan Campbell, Malik King, Stephen Sabala, Jared Smith, and Carter Taylor. We have a big three minutes here to start. If you're the Bulldogs, you know that Carter Taylor and Jared Smith are going to be the go-to guys. What are you going to do to slow them down? They're going to start in a 2-3 zone. King has the basketball. He tries to get it back to Malik and a quick turnover by the Dogs. It's a good start if you're Clinton Central. Bulldogs find Davison. Davison's got about three steps inside. Kicks back Turner. Turner goes in for the attack. Gets a foul. He'll go to the line. Well, he's not shying away. He continues to attack the lane. And for that, Taylor Turner to the free throw line. A 56% free throw shooter on the season. If you're a Bulldog fan, you need him to step up and make two. And he makes the first one. Don't forget, Coach White always comes up and sees this after ball game. So we know he'll be here to uh, talk about this basketball game. Central Central style. We hope that Coach Jared Catron comes and joins us also. Both free throws made. Eight-point deficit. Dogs by 31-23. Jared misses the shot. Taylor rebound. Put back in. But right now, they just don't have an answer for that. Uh, Jared Smith does such a nice job on the penetration that it gets the defense out of position. Carter Taylor cleans up the mess. Moore goes in high off the glass, and he's going to go to line shoot two as he draws the foul. So the foul's on number 34. That's going to be Carter Taylor, only his second. And then two quick fouls on Frankfurt here to start the second half. If Central can stay in attack mode, get the foul total to... Add up a little quicker. Keenan Orr short on the first one. As uh, kind of a different format here. When he gets the basketball, he then spreads himself out across the free throw line. Shot on the way. This one is. Rolls it in. 33-24. Just underway. 7-15 to go in the third. Jared 
Probably travel, couldn't get called. Get in. Campbell drains the three. So again, it's because they were able to get into the lane this time by the pass. So no one recognized the cutter, who was Jared Smith, and he was able to kick it out to a wide open Jordan Campbell for three. Smith reverses himself, comes down the baseline, only to get the ball. Knocked out of bounds on a block shot by King. Bulldogs will be inbounding. It'll be Turner doing that. Back on the ball, into Orr, top of the key. Three ball on the way, short. Smith tracks it down. He comes in, can't get the shot off, finds Spencer Smith over to Turner, left side baseline. Back to Brandon, top of the key, crosses over, reverses himself, tries to draw the contact, but makes the layup for two. Brandon's got nine points on four shots. I would continue to feed him somehow. As Turner almost knocks the ball loose, Malik finds it again. Hits that saddle, now Malik is inside to Spencer, or Smith. He finds Taylor coming on the baseline for two. Good basketball by Frankfurt right there. Attacked by the high post to the low post on the short corner. That's a real nice play by the Frankfurt hot dog. Keenan Miller gets the inbounds pass. Knox will be reporting in for the Bulldogs on the first stoppage of play. And we just got it as Keenan going for the basket gets fouled. This is the shot that shoots two. Yeah, he's got to finish that shot there. I mean, he's right there at the lane, I, right there at the glass, and I know he got bumped. But he's got to maintain enough body control to finish that shot. Two shots coming for Orr. First one up and in. Foul call was on Jared Smith, his first team third. It's going to be Kristen Knox in for Tommy Davidson for the Bulldogs. He'll sit down there beside Andy Foster. He's going to do a little coaching there as Owen makes both of them. 38-28, six minutes to go in the third. Jared brings it in front court, comes right side. Couple pushes, couple shoves. Campbell, three ball again, short. Rebound comes off the knock for the Bulldogs. And he's going to slow it down, getting everybody set up. Finds a Brendan Smith, a great acquisition for the Bulldogs off of the injury list. Then the other Smith, Spencer travels. A little, spinning the tires a little bit. Every time Spencer's got a chance to maybe put together a little run, they get a little unforced turnover or something on the side. As it is, Frankfurt's lead is 10, 5.39 to go third quarter. Well, Keith will bring it in front court. Sweet leg dribble. Hands it over to Jarrett Smith. Back to Malik. Sam will look at his side, finds Smitty cutting across. He's on the baseline. Steps inside the yard, swings it around, the dogs do. Malik has it. Finds Jared in the paint, goes to the right side, kiss off the glass, and in. Again, his body control, but also his ability to kind of spin it off the glass at just the right angle and have that thing drop in. And Brendan Smith goes on the attack, and Malik King pops him, and he'll go to the line to shoot two also. Now, already the fourth foul on Frank here. We played less than three minutes here in the second half. Central will try to make it a free throw shooting contest. That's not good for them. Free throw hasn't been. Yeah, but they're making them out right now. As Brendan makes his first of two. That's the second foul on King. He'll come out. The X Man, Xavier Frazier, into the game. Foul pass into Brendan. Steps to the line. Shot on the way. Misses. Rebound comes off to Stephen Sabala. And he hands it to Jared Smith. Then he finds Campbell. This is all outside the arc. Now he goes on the attack. Jumper swatted out by Orr. And he, you got to put it up quick if you're going in on it. Yeah, but did you see the, the size of the crease he had to penetrate? I mean, if, if you're going to play zone, play zone. And pack that thing in there and make them shoot it out here. Play in a zone where they can penetrate that easily. Might as well go man to man. Xavier hands it off to Smith. Shot on the way. Very free. Uh, Drake Smith in behind me as uh, they're all in here to see Mr. Orr. Sends me a little note asking if I uh, needed any help. Of course, your answer would be, you could use all the help that you can get. My answer would be, I can have my head set and I'll go home. <laughs> all right, so turnover by the Bulldogs. Frazier has it. Kicks it in to Taylor. Taylor finds 
fifth on the outside. Good key by the Bulldogs. And then Orr's going to get fouled, called for the swap. Do the third foul on Keenan. Give Garrett Smith two free throws here. Smith to the line. He's got 18 points on the night. Pretty good free throw shooter, if my recollection is correct. Just short of 80%. First one on the way. There is that one. Well, look at the halftime score. The Butler Bulldogs lead great 34-29. The Butler Bulldogs need to win that one. Yeah, they they gave that Providence game away. I was pretty disappointed in that. Jared makes both of them. Jared's got 20 points now halfway through the third quarter. Keep in mind, he didn't score at all the first quarter. 40. That's a pretty good quarter and a half worth of work. Boy, he, the last two minutes, it was all him. Heading inside. Turner looking to try to find the horse and get it to him. Gives it back to Brendan Smith. Now finds Knox. Knox puts the defense a nice job with a left hand layup. He's got good footwork. He's got a good quick first step, and Tristan Knox lays that one in. He's got four points. Bulldogs down 14. Now we'll see him. He's going to come in on the right side for an easy two. And just like that, it's 45 33. We're going to get a timeout here by the top dogs. Coach Catherine, not happy at all. It's going to be a 30 second timeout. We're going to go ahead and keep it right here. For all your junk, trash, or construction to be removed, call Whoppers today. 659 3721. You make the trash, Whoppers will worry about what to do with it. At Whoppers, you call Will Hall. If anybody else is out there having trouble with the Twitter feed, boy, you know my frustration right now. Just trying to get a Rossville score, and I can't get the thing to load. I don't know whether to blame Frankfurt's Wi-Fi or Twitter.com. I'm not real sure. I don't know. I can't answer that. I'm, I don't know anything about Twitter or any of that stuff. So, Oh, you seem like a Twitter guy. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a, well, we can't know yet. I, I, I heard YouTube and Twitter and Facebook are going to join forces, so it's going to be called you twit face. <laughs> Good name. As the Bulldogs, I'll be here all week, tip your waitress. <laughs> the Bulldogs end up stealing the ball from the hot dog. Brendan has the ball. He gets popped by a Xavier Frazier. And I think we're actually not going to get a shot. I think we're going to get a ball out of bounds. Ball out of bounds, but it is the fifth foul on Frankfurt already here in the second half. Malik King will step back in here. Jordan Campbell will get a, a, a break. And, again, Frankfurt's got 45 points. 36 of them are from guys named Smith and Taylor. It uh, almost looks like they've checked out right now, the, bull, the hot dogs. Knox picks the dribble up. Malik King almost loses or steals it. A 30-second timeout by Alfonso White. We're going to stay right here also. Come to the Frankfurt Golf Learning Center. Get equivalency diploma. College prep or sharpen your skills. Frankfurt Golf Learning Center can help you reach your potential. Classes are free. Remember, it's never too late to learn. Look up the Frankfurt Golf Learning Center. I hope my son down in North Vernon that he can pick up the game on TV, but I, I just got a feeling that he's uh, tapped in on all the Butler ball games. Well, he figures that uh, he'll hear from you how this one goes. And so he's going to absorb himself into into the, uh, into the Butler versus Creighton matchup. Central's down to just two timeouts left as they had to take one there, risk losing possession of the ball. So Davidson will be in down here right in front of us. He's looking, looking, finally finds Orr across court. Now they get it to Knox. Knock back to Orr, 318 to go in the first. As Taylor tries to scoop the ball, he does. Turnover by the Bulldogs, and quickly down, Malik King. It's a big turnover. Nice rank for and now a bucket for Carter Taylor. Man, he looks so strong when he turns around and makes that little jumper. I mean, that was a chance to cut it back to 10, but instead, Frankfurt pushes it back to 14. Orr comes down and... Elevates at the elbow, draining it, 47-35. Keenan with 11 now, but Central needs a couple of stops here to get this back into single digits. Xavier goes inside on a move that didn't happen very often. This is the shot, or a rebound. And he's going to bring it in the left side. Finds Davidson. Davidson tries to get around to Ballas. Can't get the job done. Kicked out Turner. He comes inside, draws a charging foul. As you can see it coming from... Here to Michigan Town. 
a little bit out of control and just laid that shoulder right into Carter Taylor and nearly threw him into the back wall. I think the third foul on Taylor Turner. Had he had not leaned into that, he probably would have got the call. As soon as he dropped his head and went in, he's going to do it every time. 2.28 to go in the third, 47-35, as uh, Damon Moore will be reporting in for the bowl hot dog. Next time out. Malik King walks it in, spins around Max, gets a knock out of his hands into Taylor. He gets it blocked by Turner. Moore picks up the loose ball. Here he comes. Shot by Turner, short. Goes out of bounds. Turner follows the shot. Taylor saves it. Into Malik King hand. Finds Harris coming from the left side. Kickback. Taylor doesn't take the shot. Finds Smith down low. Draws head fake. Get somebody up off the, off the inner. Who's it going to be? Either Turner or, regardless, it's going to be a fourth foul on somebody. They're going to get Taylor Turner. His fourth. It'll be Jared Smith to the free throw line. I think I watched I watched them both Turner and Orr. Orr took a big deep breath, and Turner not very happy. <laughs> Well, they, they both fell for the head and shoulder fake. Spencer Smith in, Taylor Turner out. And Jared Smith with one more free throw to try to push it back to 14. They do a nice job of getting Carter Taylor out for a little breather, especially right before a, a defensive trip. It shows you a coach that has his, uh, his mind in the game. 49-35, 150 to go. He'll get a good breather coming down the fourth quarter. Moore walks it in the front court, comes right side. Kick back to Spencer Smith, finds Knox. Knox comes down Broadway, kiss off the glass and in. He's been real aggressive this quarter. Actually, throughout the basketball game, Tristan has turned his game up very nicely this season. Jared Smith throws the ball out of bounds, but it ends up going off of Brandon Smith and out of bounds back to the hot dog. That's good hustle by the hot dogs to be able to maintain possession. 128 to go in the third quarter. Frankfurt's lead is 12. King has the basketball. Tries to put a move behind the back dribble on Spencer. Finds Damon Moore. He's taking the shot, but he gives it to Chandler. His shot missed. Harris put back in the end. Sometimes you forget Griffin Harris is six foot six. But indeed, he's six foot six. That's an easy one for him. The Laurel will bring it in. 104 to go in the first. Gives it in to Brendan Smith. Shot missed. Four rebounds. Almost going it is by Knox. Knox going to wait for the offense to show up. Or has it. 48 seconds to go. Smith lines up a three ball. Spencer drains it. Big bucket for Clinton Central. Pushes it back. To get to an 11-point deficit, 36 seconds to go in the third. Central gets the ball to start the fourth quarter. This is a big possession here for Frank. You know, I thought about Malik when we first watched him against Rossville. Forgot all about the fact that he had a really bad knee injury in summertime, and he's not quite full. You can tell that he's not not quite all the way with it. Campbell backing it out. We're down to 14 seconds. Malik between the circles. Back to Campbell. Campbell looking inside. Swinging around. Back to Campbell. Squares in with three. Going to miss it. Rebound off to Harris. A kiss off the glass. No good. Pop, pop. Jay Rod Spitz with 1.1 and a foul call. They're going to give him two shots. The foul is going to be on Spencer Smith. It's the first time I've really disagreed with the call tonight. But he got fouled on the rebound. Two shots for Jared. First one on the way. Rolls out. Up. Oh, ball tails on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he said that. Bounces it down to him. Free throw shot on the way. Looks short. He rolls it in. It's Xavier Frazier in. Campbell coming out for that last one. One. And one second here. The main thing you don't want to do is throw it into the wrong team. So we're going to give it to Orr. He's going to give it three-quarter court fly, and it looks, oh, a little strong. And that'll be the end of third. 52-40 is hot dog. Fourth quarter just around the corner.
You're listening to the voice of Pittman County Basketball here on 1570 and 96.9 on the FM dial. And you can pick it up on WILO TV. The Farmers Bank mobile banking and tablet app puts everyday banking tasks at your fingertips. Access is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anytime, anywhere. This is Lee Randolph, main office branch manager. And in today's fast-paced world, you need to access your money regardless of where you are. Whether you're at home, work, or on vacation, our convenient mobile banking services are just a simple click away. Our app is available on our website at thefarmersbank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Looking for a new car or need a car to rent? Let Del Real Automotive Group take care of you. Rich the Car Rental Guy can help when it comes to mechanical breakdown, industrial short-term leases, short-term solutions for personal transportation, insurance accident replacement, long trips with a better 15 passenger van use for larger groups, guests from out of town, or even transportation for pilots. Del Real Automotive Group will take care of you. DelRealAuto.com on 28 West Frankfurt. All right, welcome back. John Stock, Carl Kirchhoff here at Everett Case Arena. We're glad that you could join us for this last quarter. 52 40 hot dogs lead. Bulldogs will get first possession starting the third, fourth quarter. As uh, Brendan Smith tracks it down, hands it down to Davidson in the corner, and Knox tries to get a little D on, a little offensive move on Harris, doesn't work, and the Bulldogs reset the offense. Brendan goes right side, now reverses himself, comes right down the line, and he draws the foul. And every possession has to count for Clint Central in this quarter. You're down 12 on the road. And that's a good start. Brendan Smith's going to go to the line. The second foul call here on Xavier Frazier, and that's the team six on first. Looking over at Keenan Oliver's shirt. This is the jersey that he got ripped on out of Prairie. And uh, the whole bet department got it all put back together. <laughs> I guess they still have sewing machines. Right? <laughs> I guess so. Second one in by Mr. Smith, 51-41. 52-41. Moore has the ball and gets it to Xavier. So the dogs have Keen, Xavier, Frazier, Harris. They're going to get a foul away from the basketball. Moore and Smith. That's the fourth on Brendan Smith. Team fifth here of the second half. Frankert with the 11-point lead and the ball. 7.30 to play. Well, he has it. Kicks it over here to Xavier. Malik now looking inside, finds Smitty, kicks back to Frazier. Frazier didn't take a shot, dribbles back to Malik King. Frank is going to be patient here, no doubt, with the 11-point lead. And as I say that, Griffin Harris pulls up. Jumper miss, Smith with a rebound. He can't get inside. Good D by Mr. Smith, the Bulldog. Frazier kicks it back to Malik King. 6.57 to go on the third fourth period. Just underway. Malik King, jump stop, shot of an effort. He does that better than anybody I've seen in a long time, being able to go to the left hand while on the move. We saw him beat Rossville that way. Knox out I thought it, Malik was going to get a pick right there, but didn't quite get there in time. Knox pulls her back out, swings over here to Davison, squares up the three, a nice screen by Orr, and he's buried. You got that right. Keenan took up a lot of space right there, and this is back to a 10-point Frankfurt lead with 6.24 to go. Starters coming back in for the hot dogs for the next break. That'll be Campbell, Patalas, and Taylor. Smitty has the ball. He's played the whole game, as he normally does. Moore has it at the elbow. Turn around, can't get the shot off. Orr was on him. Malik comes down the line, picks off to Harris, and a kiss off the glass. And that play made possible by Malik King in the dribble penetration. Frankfurt continues to hold a 10 to 12 point lead. Right now it's back to another. Davidson this time fakes the three and then heads inside and draws the foul. He'll go to the line shooting two. Now they're going to need Tommy here in the fourth quarter if they're going to get an opportunity to win this thing late. Brendan Smith's got 11 points. Keen Ward's got 11. Tommy's got seven and he's got two big free throws coming in. Goes all the way. There he is. Here comes the hot dogs. Uh, here comes the cavalry, man. Campbell, Rosales, Carter, Taylor all return for Frank to get some good minutes out of Frazier and Griffin and more. 
All right. Second one off the way. Misses. Knox put back and in and a foul. What a play by Kristen Knox. That kid is athletic as they get. If he hangs in the air to get the rebound, he absorbs that contact. We talked about it at halftime. Didn't shy away this time. Gets the foul call on Sabalas. That cuts it to a nine-point deficit. And now Knox to complete the three-point play. Free throw shot and miss. Oh, no. Rebound, Derek Smith. Free throws and your ability to make them. Yikes. Down nine and a steal by the Bulldogs. And a foul by Malik King at the 10 second line. Keenan Orr was on full blast at that point. Malik King with the blocking foul. Well, I'll tell you what, Frankfurt better tighten the screws here a little bit. Keenan over the line. It's a one-on-one situation still. It's just a nine-point ball game with 5.32 to go. That foul will put the Bulldogs in a double bonus. First of all, they one and one They missed. missed three free throws in a row. And four in the quarter. A lot of points. The ball at the elbow, turning around, finds Jared outside. Three ball on the way. Two to deep. The Dallas rebounds, and now a little pass to Taylor. He puts it in, and he gets fouled. The Clinton Central is going to watch the game film, and they're going to look at the last 45 seconds and realize what an opportunity they just had. This game isn't over, but, boy, it could be a whole lot tighter than it is right now. Make some free throws and don't commit. That was a silly foul. Carter Taylor's already got a layup on the glass. There's no reason to undercut him. And he's just going to give him a chance for a three-point play. And he does it. A good crowd here at Everett Chase for this ball game. I'm glad to see that. As you and I have all said, county basketball has been so much fun to cover this year. If you haven't been to a game, then you're the loser. As the Dallas holds Davison before the turnover, that's why the turnover occurred. And so they'll be Davis in the line on a double bonus. But again, Central is just two out of six at the free throw line in this quarter. And one of those was the front end of a one on one. You've got to convert both of these. Man, make some free throws, guys. Davis went up, front, short. Well, I'll tell you, they've. they've they could have been down to about a four-point lead by the time. Second one on the way. A little too strong as he adjusted himself. Two out, out of eight. First one. Two out of eight at the line in the quarter. Oh, we've watched him do it time in, time out on, on ball games coming down the line. Frankfurt's got to capitalize now. They have a chance to extend this lead. As Malik has it outside the yard. Finds Taylor at the elbow, shot short, rebound, and Sabalas with the foul as Turner had complete possession. And that'll put another double bonus. So, man, that may be Frankfurt's best defense right now. Just foul them. They can't make a free throw. I mean, they, they've done, they did really well for three quarters. I don't know what's changed here. I, I really don't. They they can't they can't do it. They're all short, so they're getting tired. Their legs are getting tired. They're not using yeah. their legs. They're seventeen year old kids. I understand that. Come on here. I'm tired, but I'm old. <laughs> Step up to the line like you know you can and and drill a free throw. You're two for nine in the quarter. He's a killer. He's a killer, man. He makes that one. 59, 48, 4, 40 to go on this one. And I'll tell you, they've played well enough to, honestly, Central's played well enough to win the game. They just haven't made enough free throws, haven't kept the ball out of the lane enough. As the dogs playing a little keep away right now, running clock. But from the quality of play, Central's played real well tonight. Smitty. Campbell back to Malik. I'm watching the coaching staff here. They wanted to go to the left side. The, coach, the Frankfurt coaching staff wants Frankfurt to hold the ball and make Central play man-to-man. Then they can attack. Right Malik here. does. Finds Harris on the weak side. A foul by Orr. 
Griffin Harris is going to have to earn two free throws instead of shoot a layup. But that's the fourth foul on Keenan Orr. To the line is Griffin Harris, just two out of six there on the season. All right. One dribble shot on the way. Barry's out. That one looks easy. Yeah. Man, when you're that tall, you just lean forward and lay it in, don't you? <laughs> just reach out there and just drop it in. I was just a little bitty guy. I had to get a running start and jump. <laughs> this is the second one as Jarrett knocks the ball but saved by the Bulldog. Or brings it in. Heads to the right side. Splits the defender. And Taylor going to get the foul and all go to the line. Shooting two. Central is doing the right thing. They're, they're attacking. They're getting fouled. So they're having opportunities to score the clock stop. The simple fact is they're only three out of ten from the free throw line in this fourth quarter. Ah, oh, Barry's the first. Brendan Smith comes in. Spencer comes out. Well, now you've got, for the Bulldogs, you've got four different scorers on the floor, and that's Brendan Smith, Tristan Knox, Keenan Orr, Tommy Davidson. Those four guys, nice balance this evening. It's Keenan makes the second free throw, and you're only down by 10 here with 3.47 to go. I'm going to tell you, I, I think this is the best basketball game I've seen Tristan Knox play. I'm with you. You wonder where that's been all year, but glad he's coming out with it. Well, sometimes you take the challenge from a from the coaching staff. Sometimes they've been trying to challenge it. Sometimes they finally play it the right way that just turns the knob just right. He, he played real well tonight. Well, he has the ball. We're down to 320 to go. And, and usually this is what gets Frank in trouble. They start to stand a little bit, and then nobody attacks or looks for the shot. So this is a good stall game. They've got good spacing. They've got they've got a relief valve in the middle of the floor, and Central's going to go ahead and match up right now. Campbell goes right down the Broadway, a right hand lay waiting on. That's a beautiful job by the Frankfurt Hot Dogs getting Central in a position where they had to switch to man. And Jordan Campbell gets a layup out of it. Brenda Smith on the attack, kicks back out, Knox lets the tipper go, and it buries it. <laughs> Tristan Knox with 12 in the game. The Bulldogs are still in it. They're down 10 with 2.40 to go. Jared walks it up, brings it in front court, 2.33 to go. At some point, you're going to have to start thinking about going ahead and giving fouls here. Extend the game as much as you can. Instead, you're going to give up layup. As Harris almost rolls it back out, but he puts it in for two. I mean, at some point, you got to just foul whoever this little half-court line instead of letting them shoot layups all night. Smith, three ball, shot, missed. Harris rebounds, but once again, Coach Tetrin says, let's slow it down. We're down to the two-minute mark, 64-52. Jared comes out. We're going to get a foul on Turner, and he's done. Malik King will get a one-on-one -one out of this, but Taylor Turner just fouled out. Spencer Smith, check in for him. <laughs> okay, uh, the ref's telling him he's got five fouls. The what? sub is standing right here at the bench, buddy. Right. All right. Right, he's right here. He's standing right here. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. I heard you. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> one and one for Malik King. Shot. Oh, I miss. Oh. But Jared Smith pulls the rebound down. Home ball stolen by Spencer coming out of nowhere. Smith on the attack comes right side off the glass with him. I'm just amazed by his body control. He's got great balance. Great athlete. Davidson has it on the block. Can't get the shot off. Good D by Harris. Kicks out the knock. Knox drives goes right side. This weak side helps. Smith can't get the shot off the baseline. Finds Brendan Smith for two on the right side. A little, little in stature, big in heart. He's got 13 tonight. Central's down 12. Malik well, gets fouled out here between the circles. I was getting ready to say he went in with the big boys and had to get it over the top of those trees. It was a good tackle by somebody. Brendan Smith, he just fouled out. George Landis will check in. Brendan Smith will check out. It's been a short season for him because of a foot injury, but he, he played his guts out tonight. Leaves with 13 points. 
All right. Malik King to the line. Missed the front end last time. Second one on the way. Very no good. And again, an offensive rebound by Jared Smith. Yep. Man, you foul them and make them go to the line and they miss it, and then they get the rebound. We're out of five seconds now. Tristan Knox causes that, actually. Central's down 12 with just a minute 10 to go. And a couple of timeouts. Boy, you need you need some fast action buckets here. Or you'd like to go back and make the uh, seven free throws you've missed in the quarter. I'm going to keep harping on that, aren't I? Yep. Yeah. Knox goes in, draws contact. Campbell's going to get the foul. And off to go to line shooting two. Hit over good. WILO and WILO's two wardrobe. Provided by Long Horn Marky inside MCS Bomber Hardware for new location. Take a plate 28 West, County Corner from Affordable Auto. For work school to play, let Long Horn bring to wardrobe. Long Horn Marky to favor call 765 650 or log on at this. Tristan misses the first of two free throws. I'm telling you, you're gonna watch it. You're gonna watch a game film and realize, boy, you had a chance. This is the second one, also. They've missed nine free throws in this quarter alone. And then Knox just picks Smith, and Smith fouls him going into the layup. They go to line shooting two. Smith tried to do a behind the back pass to himself, and when he did, Knox just picked him. Fifteen turnovers for the dog. A real opportunity to steal one if you were if you were a young bulldog. Uh, they can't buy a free throw. There's another one. Now that five for fifteen in the quarter. They missed the first one. Then they try to adjust their second one on the first miss. Knox throws it up and puts that one in. 66-55, under a minute to go. Malik King, he's going to get it picked by Knox, and then he travels. As Malik King might have tripped him up there a little bit. What do you think? That's real good hustle by Tristan Knox. And again, Central played as hard as I've seen him play all year. And it's going to come to not being able to make free throws in the fourth quarter. It's a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves. You're listening to Pitton County High School Basketball here on 1570, 96.9, and streaming on PittonCountyDailyNews.com. We all know Bruno's Pizzeria has the best pizza in town, made with fresh ingredients every day. But did you know they offer gluten-free pizzas, too? Gluten-free pizza is now available upon request at Bruno's Pizzeria. Don't feel that you have to fix your gluten-free pizza at home. Take a break, pick up the phone, and dial 659-2121. That's 659-2121, and ask for gluten-free pizza. Bruno's Pizzeria, 1447 East Wabash Street, Frankfurt. Any financial institution can offer a home equity loan, but no one else has the personal service, the range of options, and the competitive rates we have. You can use the equity in your home for remodeling or any good reason. And you'll be supporting our local community. Talk to us about a home equity loan, an equal housing lender. Encompass Credit Union, member NCUA, community-minded, just like you. Just like you. Right, thanks for coming about. 50 seconds to go on this ball game. The hot dogs inbounding it, leading 66-55. They get it inside, but they're just inbound to Taylor. And he ends with Smith, and Malik Green King brings it to the left side. That's the back out. Now goes on the attack and draws the foul. Going to get a blocking call on Keenan Orr, and that'll be the third Bulldog to foul out here tonight. He heads over here to the bench. He leaves with 13 points on the evening. Coach White having a discussion before he puts his, his player in. This discussion may be who do I have left. <laughs> It'll be Aiden Barrett to jump up and come in. So you only lose about seven or eight inches inside. Yeah, and, and a whole lot of uh, jumping ability. Malik King is going to get two out of this. And he had not made a free throw yet tonight. Come on, Malik. As it, what? I mean, what's going on? Rolls it way in and out. I, I. I'm not. I'm trying not to cheer for either side. I'm cheering for just for somebody to make a free throw. 
<laughs> at this point. Well, back to the practice field. Second one up, but it's very There's that one. This is just not uh, brings it quickly down right side. Nobody picks him up, kicks it off to Davis. And Davis then comes left side, jump stop, shot block, picked up by Spencer Smith. He throws it to Brandon or to Barrett. Barrett kicks it back to Davis and he tries again. Harris tries to L or put him with the knee and he draws the foul. At the end of the day, you know what the difference in this game is going to be is that two and a half minute stretch at the end of the second quarter where Franklin went from down one to up ten at halftime. That's it pretty much stayed between 8 and 12 points ever since then. Well, you do that and the, and the missed free throws here. And the fourth well, I'm trying to think of something else to talk about. Yeah, no, Everybody's already tired of hearing me say this. I'm tired of hearing me say it, but it's the difference <laughs> in the game. Tommy Davidson with this free throw could become the fourth Bulldog in double figures tonight. They've had good balance. Everybody has to step up when a guy like Brandon Berg is out, and they've done that, but he missed the free throw. That's 11 missed free throws in the quarter by Central, and they're down by 11. Now, Darren's going to get the ball because he does shoot it very well. Knox draws the foul. Well, we pick up Central on Tuesday night from Clinton Central High School. It will be the play-in game for the Hoosier Heartland Conference Tournament. Clinton Central hosts Carroll. Games at 7. Don, we'll be on the air when. When do you want to go on the air? Yeah, we either time make- now about 10 minutes. People are making their schedules. they got to know. Well, we can probably get on about 10 minutes before the ball game, 15 at the most. Now, look at this. Jared can't even make a free throw. If I get the Z, this is like the Rossville game. We had an opportunity to put it away, and they almost coughed it up. Second one on the way misses both of them. For Central now can't get a rebound either. Yeah. That's not the team. fifth offensive rebound by Frankfurt on a missed free throw, also here in the quarter. Well, the JV Hot Dogs won 64-36. Varsity uh, got 67-56. And Malik King to the line. Don't forget, Coach White will be here after the ball game to talk to Carl about this basketball game. That's the first shot up and in. Trying to get... Coach White to come down to this end. If he doesn't, though, he get a good TV shot on you. Be your best side. You're back. Well, thanks. <laughs> Everyone agrees. As Malik King crosses the line too soon. Hey, well, let's wind the last 10.6 seconds of this one. Yeah, don't foul, boys. Oh, please. Let's go home. Not brings it in. Comes right side. Draws contact. No foul. Put back in. In. You can thank your buddy Andy Foster for calling timeout with 2.7 seconds to go. Now what's that about? Talk to him about that later. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's the guy that got all over me when we talked about the holiday tournament on Central, and then he calls timeout down 10. <laughs> uh, well, again, the game reset. Frankfurt's up 10. We're getting to this one. Uh, it's been a real nice showing by the Bulldogs. Say just a couple of things, but uh, when you miss 11 free throws in the fourth quarter, that's been a thing, and you give up offensive rebounds to your opponent when they miss a free throw, that, that's going to sting. So, again, the game film is going to show a lot of real positive things for Central, but it's learning how to win these kinds of games that still have to be done. Bigger looking to get it in bounds. Finally does. Five Campbell. And that will be the, the ball game. 68-58. We'll take a two and a half minute timeout. We'll come back with Sack and Coach White. You're listening to Fifteen County Basketball here on 1570-96.9 and streaming FiftenCountyDailyNews.com. Hi, this is Missy from ServPro. Did you know that 50% of businesses may never reopen following a fire or water disaster? That's why it's crucial to make sure your business is ready for whatever happens with a free emergency ready profile from ServPro of Boone and Clinton Counties. So get ready today and protect your property from the uncertainty of tomorrow by calling ServPro of Boone and Clinton Counties at 765-659-9600. 
helping make fire and water damage like it never even happened. Whether your gas needs are grain drying or home heating, there's no gas like propane. Propane goes to work and keeps on working at a more reasonable cost than you ever thought possible. Call Newell's Gas and Appliance in Michigan Town today for free estimates. You can rely on Newell's Gas and Appliance for dependable propane on time, regardless of the weather. Propane plus service, available at Newell's Gas and Appliance in Michigan Town. 249-2866. That's 249-2866. The Farmers Bank mobile banking and tablet app puts everyday banking tasks at your fingertips. Access is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anytime, anywhere. This is Lee Randolph, Main Office Branch Manager. And in today's fast-paced world, you need to access your money regardless of where you are. Whether you're at home, work, or on vacation, our convenient mobile banking services are just a simple click away. Our app is available on our website at thefarmersbank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Indiana Packers. Hello, Clinton County residents. I'm Kirk Saylor with Indiana Packers Corporation. We are pleased to announce we will soon start production operations at our Frankfurt facility and need good, hardworking people like you to fill production and industrial maintenance positions. If you're interested in working full-time for a leading pork processor with good pay and great benefits and live in the Frankfurt area, then stop by and see us on Friday, January 22nd from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Saturday, January 23rd from 8 a.m. to noon to complete an employment application with us. Our facility is located at 1150 Vermont Street, just off of Washington Avenue near the Milky Way. We are excited about our future with the Frankfurt community and we would love to have you be part of our team. Indiana Packers is an equal opportunity employer. Come see what we're all about. We want people like you. Come be a part of our family. Indiana Packers. Welcome back to Everett State Arena here. The final score, 68-58. The Hot Dogs win. And with our staff, Mr. Carl Kirkwood. Well, here... Game ending stats first for the visiting Clinton Central Bulldogs. They were led tonight by Tristan Knox, scoring 15 points coming off the bench. Seven field goals, just one out of five at the free throw line. Brendan Smith scores 13. Keenan Orr scores 13. Tommy Davidson had nine. Taylor Turner chipped in five. Spencer Smith hit a three-pointer for his three points. The Bulldogs shot it well, 20 of 43. That's 47%. They hit three out of 11 from behind the arc. Turned it over 14 times, which isn't too bad. Actually forced Frankfurt into more turnovers than they themselves committed. But again, Clint Central's problem, 15 out of 30 at the free throw line. They missed 15 free throws in the game, but 11 of those were in the fourth quarter. That was uh, what helped decide it. Central did a great job rebounding this evening until the fourth quarter. So those two things coming down the stretch is what wound up being Kind of the problem and the reason that Frankfurt holds on for a 10-point win. The Hot Dogs are led by Jared Smith. He scores 25 points all in the last three quarters. Jared with 25 points on 9 of 15 shooting. Carter Taylor had 21 on 9 of 14 shooting. Jordan Campbell chipped in 9. Griffin Harris, 7. Malik King, 4. And Damon Moore with 2. The Hot Dogs shoot 26 of 51. That's 51%. And 4 out of 10 behind the arc. And Frankfurt couldn't make a free throw either. Either 12 of 25 from the line, 48%. And Frankfurt turns it over 16 times. I'm joined now by Clinton Central coach Fonzo White. Coach White, first of all, the team looked great. They played hard. Effort was, was outstanding here this evening. And statistically, there's a lot of good stuff here to cover. You have great balanced scoring. You did something that never happens at Case Arena. You shot more free throws than Frankfurt did. All right, you forced them into more turnovers than you committed, unofficially by what we've got. You did a lot of really good things here tonight. you got to be pretty happy with that. Yes, sir, Carl. Carl I'm really happy for the kids. And I just told them in the locker room, I said, you know, Frankfurt's a good 3A school. And, you know, Coach Catherine, you know, he, he's a hard person. He told his kids from prior to the season, he said, you're going to look at a different Clint Central team this season. You know, I commend him for that. Uh, uh, our kids played exceptionally well. We had a lot of balance. Tristan Knox stepped up for us last night and stepped up for us again tonight and kind of led the brigade a little bit for us and did a lot of positive things, you know, to step up in the absence of Axel Brandenburg, which we hope that we get him back next week when we go Tuesday night against Carroll. We were just talking um, 
right at the end of the game. We think this is the best game we've seen Tristan play. Uh, he was extremely active uh, defensively, turning defense into offense in the transition game. Did a lot of good things for you, uh, and hopefully that's something he can plug in as well, even even if you do get Axel back. Yes, sir, and, and that's one of the things I said to him, too, and I told him he's got our player of the game tonight because, you know, he brought it, and he brought the intensity that we need to play at, and he didn't take any plays off, and he just did a great job for us from top to bottom from the beginning of the game, and he, he took on a leadership role for us and said, hey, coach, I don't mind coming off the bench. I, I want to be the sixth man. I feel more comfortable being that sixth man, and I said, are you sure? And he's like, yes, sir. That's, that's awesome, and that, that just shows you the character of a kid because most kids – aren't, aren't going to make that sacrifice. And, uh, you talked last night as I was leaving Central that tonight was a Grizzly reunion. Yes, sir. Okay, because you and Coach Catherine know each other a little bit. Can you explain to our listeners about that? Yes, sir. And back in 2008, 2009, it was my first year at Franklin College as an assistant coach, and uh, Catherine was a senior on that team. Uh, we, we led the NCAA schools in field goal percentage of all three levels, Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. So we got an award for that, and he was a uh, – big product of that, you know, he shot a blistering 59% from the field. And, you know, he took the shot that made a lot of people think that they were good shots because it opened up our two guys, Jason and Dustin, who were prolific from three-point range, both shooting 45 and 48%. So it, it was great experience to coach against him. And, you know, Coach Preferson, I, I spoke a text last night wishing us well. So, you know, he's doing a great job over here at Frankfurt doing the program just like I'm trying to do at Clinton Central. And you're doing a great job as well. Again, I really appreciate the effort you're putting into this. The program uh, is turning in the right direction. We're going to catch back up with you Tuesday. You've got Carroll coming in for kind of the play-in game of the conference tournament. And now you can turn your attention to them a little bit more. Uh, I, I believe they beat Tri-Central last night. And last okay. I knew, they were beating Faith Christian today when they were playing. So you may be facing a Carroll team. That, when we saw at the holiday tournament, they didn't, they didn't play with a whole lot of confidence. They may be a little different now. Yes, sir. They got, they got the young kid. Uh, I can't remember what his name is off the top of my head, but uh, I like what he does, and I watched a couple of films right before I left the house tonight. And, you know, I, I think they have a lot of different things that they can do. Uh, Coach Weaver did a great job against Eastern in the Eastern game that I watched where they slowed it down in the game of 38-28, which, you know, he's got his kids playing pretty smart right now. And, you know, I told our kids you can't take any opponent lightly, and if you want to get to Thursday, you got to play hard Tuesday night. Well, we will be there to cover it, and we're looking forward to it, and we know that you'll have something in store for us. And uh, I'll wear my Clinton Central green a little bit Tuesday night. How about that? Hey, I appreciate it, Carl. All right. Thank you, and Don both. Thank you. Right. Coach Fonzo White of the Clinton Central Bulldogs. They they fall this evening 68-58 to here at Frankfurt, but they play a whale of a basketball game. Uh, and, again, if, if you don't look at the scoreboard, you just watch the action of the game, Don. I, I thought Clinton Central played well enough to win. It's just you got to make free throws. you got to miss when the other you, – you got to rebound when the other team misses free throws. Uh, they didn't do those things late, uh, which is going to be the thing that, that winds up being the difference here. But just, just in watching the game, uh, especially after we saw them last night and they looked a little bit disorganized and look at them tonight, uh, they were two teams, really, as, as we watched this, this evening. Yeah, I know that it's all part of the growing process of getting yourself better. But well, I'll tell you what, when Coach White can get all of those tools kicking on – on the same night, they're going to kick somebody right out of the gym. Well, they got to be hoping that that's Tuesday night. And, you know, Carroll is, is an opponent. That, if they're a little scary because when we – I just said we saw them at the holiday tournament, and I'm like, boy, this this is as bad a Carroll team as I've seen. They, they look disinterested. Um, but now they've won a couple of games here in a row. They, they beat Dry Central last night, uh, Faith Christian today, and, and – as he pointed out, played played a really good Eastern team to within 10 points because they just slowed the game down, took the air out of the ball. They're going to come in with a specific plan to try to beat Central on their floor. As we see, the loser doesn't get to play anymore next week. Yeah, right? I mean, that's right. You've got to win Tuesday night to get to go play uh, in the rest of the tournament Thursday and Saturday. So there's some incentive right there. Uh, and so Bulldog fan, if you're listening, and you can get out to the gym Tuesday night, they would appreciate your support. If you can't get to the gym Tuesday night, yeah, we'll be there for you. That's right. Pick us right up. Right. And a nice matchup between the Clinton Bulldogs and the Frankfurt Hot Dogs, brought to you in part by Wampler Services Incorporated and Compass Credit Union, Jerry's Body Shop, Bruno's Pizzeria, the Farmer's Bank, Noodles Gas and Appliance, Surf Pro of Boone in Clinton County, Indiana Packers, Longhorn Marketing, Inside MCF Farm and Hardware. Well, the hot, the hot Dogs, they win the basketball game. 
They go to 5-9. and nine. Their next matchup will be Friday night. They'll play at Crawfordsville. Um, and then the Bulldogs, they fall to 3-11. and 11. We'll have them, as Carl has said, Tuesday night out at the Pound, Pittsburgh High School. They'll take on Carroll in the play on playing game. For myself, Don Stock, Carl Kersenel, Dan back to studio, Russ behind the camera. I want to wish everybody a good night. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you Tuesday night. You've been listening to Clinton County High School Basketball here on 1570, 96.9 WILO TV, and streaming on ClintonCountyDailyNews.com. Good night, everybody. You've been listening to Clinton County High School Basketball Action on WILO, WILO2, and streaming worldwide at ClintonCountyDailyNews.com. Basketball action brought to you by Bruno's Pizzeria, Encompass Credit Union, Sir Pro of Boone and Clinton Counties, The Farmer's Bank, Newell's Gas and Appliance, Indiana Packers, Wampler Services Incorporated, Frankfurt Adult Learning Center, Longhorn Marketing inside MCF and Casper Media. This has been a Casper Broadcasting Sports presentation.